the next thing, and uh, you know, probably the sexier thing here is establish a digital architecture, security models, and align workloads with the appropriate uh, deployment models. Um, and what, what we talk about a lot here is that each cloud will look a little bit different from client to client based on what they're trying to accomplish. But you do have five primary environments that you consider today. Um, can, you, can you, so walk us through the five environments. Again, I mean, you gave us, so there's a, there's a legacy environment. Uh, anyway, I mean, you know what list I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, so the legacy environment is just acknowledging the reality that not all your systems are gonna lift out on that. So you have to maintain systems so, in a legacy environment. So why is that? Is that just is is that just because because of the the way they're written and and the way they they function today? They they're just not going to go to a cloud environment. Uh, yes, right. So there are some devices that still require direct physical connection. So in the health industry, biomed devices, they're, they're, you're just not going to get out of them anytime soon. Then there are the larger ones that are critical systems, like your EMR, that your vendor won't support different processing models, right, because they're monolithic in nature. But, so you may as well just acknowledge them, put them in the corner, and then come back to them in a couple of years' time. Yeah, and then focus on the other. You know, right. okay. you're, you're scattered. So the first one we have is a legacy environment. Uh, walk us through the rest. Yeah, so the, the next level up is you have applications that are still server-based, but they're virtualized. So a virtualized server can exist anywhere. It doesn't have to exist in your data center. For the most part, right? so and and those are the next target to move out into infrastructure as a service. So your Azure VM hosting, your AWS instances, but they're still server based. So you're building server instances for that. And then when you take the next step beyond that, now you're focusing higher up, which is more workflow based. So you're going after software as a service platforms, which everybody has right now. So whether you're using um, Salesforce or Dynamics or you know other software based platform. You know, you're focused on workflow there. You're not focused on anything below the workflow for the most part. And that also kind of lends itself to platform as a service too, right? So when you're making those investments into SharePoint Online, into Salesforce, into you know, other CRM platforms, now you have more platforms that I could kind of build different workflows, different processes, you know, different solutions in a single platform instance rather than different software instances. And then ultimately, the utopic vision when people get to that level is native development, cloud native development models where you're designing microservices, web services, and the like. But that's typically the the end state of a journey. So the so the distinction when we go so every every health system will have those five components: legacy or a private cloud, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, platform, and then cloud native. So. What's the distinctive is how much of each of those you're going to use. So some some health systems might have 20% legacy, uh, you know, 30% infrastructure as a service, and so forth and so on. Um, but the goal really is whatever whatever that that core layer of legacy. We're we're shrinking that over the next couple of years. We're moving to infrastructure as a service. Even that layer, we're moving to software platform and cloud native. Um, and the reason we're doing that is the the levels of efficiency, agility cost savings, and uh, access to innovation that organizations are going to have by going to the cloud are just uh, significantly more um, than uh, traditional traditional models. All right, so we create these really cool diagrams. We map out uh, the entire uh, digital architecture, the security model, and uh, we align the workloads to the various uh, layers of, of cloud infrastructure that we're going to use. Now we're ready to migrate and operate. And uh, this is the easy part, right? So we, uh, we just have to migrate 1,800 applications, 1,800 instances of applications. It's pretty straightforward. Um, and uh, I'm being a little facetious here. So here's where, we, here's where you start this process. You start with uh, negotiating agreements and KPIs with the uh, cloud vendors. What are some of the things that a healthcare CIO or healthcare organization should be thinking about when they're negotiating these cloud-based contracts? Um, I guess first and foremost, to our earlier conversation on like knowing your environment, knowing your instances. When you know how many uh, virtual servers or instances I'm going to need to maintain because I just can't get rid of them, but they're still server-based, you can lock in certain pricing models with your vendors, right? So, so 
when you're locking in reserve pricing for, I'll use um, Azure, for example, and say, I know I'm going to maintain 5,000 VMs, you're going to get a very different price point than if you say, you know, I'm going to spin up instances willy nilly, you know, and it's a vast order of magnitude too. So knowing what your reserve pricing and forecast will be, and say, I know I'm going to maintain this for at least three years, allows you to negotiate very differently than just kind of winging it and then going into it. So again, back to that very first step, which is knowing your world and what you're going to maintain is going to be key for you. Yep. And then from there, just kind of peeling back to your usage case and models. Yeah. Well, and some of the things that, that we talk about a lot is you, you can't outsource security because you have a background in security. So you can't outsource security. So you need to negotiate that in. Uh, so understand the HIPAA requirements, understand any PCI requirements you have, uh, and you have to be able to uh, provide the reports and, and pass through all the way, all the way down. So you can't outsource it. You're still responsible. You still have to be able to, to supply that. Um, the other thing, the other gotcha that I think people don't think about is, um, especially with cloud applications, like uh, where, you know, you're moving vast amounts of data into these cloud environments. Um, make sure you can get it out. Uh, you know, when you're negotiating these contracts, uh, not only make sure you can get it out technically, make sure you can get it out financially. Uh, I know that some of these clouds, it's interesting, they will, they'll literally send trucks out to pick up your data, bring it to their data center and pump it in. And some of those, some of that service is almost free. But to get it out, they hit you with bandwidth costs and all sorts of other stuff. And it costs a, a fortune to get it back out. So be, be careful of those kinds of things. And, you know, this is a, we only have a couple more minutes, but those are, those are just some of the things off the top of my head that I would, uh, I, I would say just keep those things, keep those things in mind. So this well, is the part where I kind of to say out to make sure to emphasize too is the type of data, right? So data that I need fast response on is going to cost very different than data I probably only need, you know, once in a long period. So your PAX image research imaging, for example, yeah, which allows you to make a different. Yeah, and when we're looking at uh, when we're looking at the architecture, we're looking at those bandwidth requirements and we're looking at those access requirements because the 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 more access you need in the cloud, you can pay for very high availability, very high access, very low uh, bandwidth uh, or latency, low latency, sorry, low latency uh, servers. But if you don't have to, you really shouldn't. So uh, so really knowing your workloads and aligning uh, correctly to the to what you're buying is, is really important. 